New tonight, we're learning new details about what led up to the Black Hawk helicopter crash that killed three members of the Minnesota National Guard in 2019. Five investigates obtained the detailed report that raises serious questions about why an aircraft inspector who had already been released by the National Guard was allowed to sign off on that fatal flight. Only on Nightcast, investigative reporter Ryan Raich sat down with leaders from the Guard who are taking full responsibility for their mistakes, Ryan. Yeah, Lindsay, we've spent more than a year trying to get our hands on this report from the Guard because there are many unanswered questions. We now know there was a major breakdown in communication among leadership. An inspector who today would never be allowed near the aircraft and a Black Hawk helicopter that was doomed from the start. It offers new insight into why three members of the Minnesota National Guard lost their lives that day. On a slice of farmland 20 miles south of St. Cloud, the granite from a brand new permanent memorial glistens in the summer sun. Every time even somebody drives by, you know, it can look and think of those soldiers. This public memorial is to honor the three members of the Minnesota National Guard, not to question why they lost their lives. But for the last 18 months, there's been nothing but questions about what led up to the deadly crash of the UH-60L Black Hawk helicopter. Tonight, it's becoming clear that the three men who died were on an aircraft that simply was not ready to fly. Five investigates obtained this 35-page military investigation that details mistakes made in the air and on the ground where that aircraft was being worked on. According to investigators, an inspector failed to catch that a key device was improperly installed because of the inspector's carelessness and inattention, leading to the aircraft being signed off as airworthy when it was in fact not. That inspector also tested positive for marijuana the day after the crash. Investigators say it's impossible to know whether that impacted his job performance, but the report did find his overall fitness is questionable. Months earlier, the guard had released the unnamed inspector on disability due to issues related to PTSD, depression, and anxiety. But somehow he was still allowed to work on the aircraft in a different capacity as a federal employee, a policy the government has since changed. Should he have been allowed to work on the aircraft after being released by the National Guard? At the time, the, uh, in, the technical inspector was authorized to work in our facility based on the regulation at the time. Colonel Greg Fix is the state Army aviation officer for the Minnesota National Guard. If the same situation were to happen today, would that inspector be allowed to still work with aircrafts like the one behind you? No, today that, uh, that particular employee would be uh, the day he was separated from military service. He would not be allowed to work on helicopters Last year, the Guard only provided a brief one-page summary about what led to the crash, but now they admit they made serious mistakes, including a failure to share important and relevant information to supervisors. It was a lack of communication, and we take full responsibility for that. So uh, we've gone to great lengths to improve that now. The report pointed to inexperienced supervisors as part of the problem. The investigator found that they were qualified for their positions, but they lacked the experience to effectively mitigate the risks associated with their mission. Are your supervisors experienced enough to, to handle the soldiers? We really want to honor these soldiers by taking corrective actions from all these things. And we briefed the families on this. We've made changes to our organization. The Guard tells us that since the tragedy, five people have faced discipline, ranging from a letter of reprimand to unpaid suspension. The inspector is no longer with the organization. What do you want the public to take away from these findings? We have taken a good look at our organization and that we've made improvements to try and break as many of those links that were identified in this accident to hopefully ensure that it doesn't happen in the future. After 18 long months, we are finally learning the answers as to why that helicopter crashed in this field. But it doesn't change how they will be honored moving forward. People who come out and visit are just been so grateful and thankful and, and the family is the same with them. They're just uh, really thankful that this is here and that their, their sons won't be forgotten. Those families, they're, they're part of our family and we, uh, we take responsibility for, for what went wrong and, and we just want to make it right and prevent it.
In the end, the guard describes this tragedy as a series of human errors with a lot of people involved. As part of this process, they've added more training for pilots when they encounter emergency situations, and that includes streamlining the checklist to focus on flying instead of assessing situ the situation. And the, Lindsay, what makes this tragedy even worse is one of the men on board who was riding in the back, Warren Officer Candidate Court Black. Plattenberg was considered a non-essential crew member. The guard says it was a mistake to allow him to fly because it's against policy. Ryan, you really do feel for the family. You know, they had to want answers, want to know what happened, but this is hard to learn. You certainly hope it brings some closure for the families. You do. Ryan, thank you so much.